Yes, sir. The smoke cops passing by, you hear the sirens. But it's lying, kids dying. You see mama crying. The city sick of trying. Time to riot, act violent, be defiant. No alliance, tired of being silent. I can see the frustration in the people's faces. Just trying to hold it together like they was wearing braces. No more bases, and America is still racist. I must admit, it gets me hotter than some fireplaces. I pray for my leaders, even though they mislead us. They claim we dealt the same hand, so how they cheat us? I shake it off, cause I'm really here to reach the laws. Preaching nothing but the cross Rushing in like Pentecost We shutting down these liars We got that good fire Hoping Christ would grip your heart Like a pair of pliers We not your average We some savages The good fighters But we keep it in the spirit Cause we got some priors We ain't never scared Boy we everywhere God tell us go Trust we gon' get it there Go get the whole squad Tell them mount up It's time to set the streets free Cause they bound up We ain't never scared Boy we everywhere all right. All right. Yes, sir. We on. We on. We on. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the No Judgment Zone. I'm your host, Miguel Profect Esparza, along with my anointed pastor, father in the faith, Bishop. How's it going? We on. Oh, man. It's going great. It's going great. Good. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah, we were just sitting here conversating uh, <laughs> about tightening up the business, man. That I'm just over here laughing because I'm like, man, cats really sometimes, sometimes you got to learn the hard way, man. And it's like, unfortunately, it's not God's will for you, but it's like, man, some people don't learn until, man, they get smacked up a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. We know some. Well, I ain't gonna go there right now. <laughs> any, huh. any, any, anyways, welcome everybody. Um, shout out to our Spotify listeners, um, Spreaker dot com listeners, YouTube listeners. Um, shout out to Jerry Royce Live, all the Power XXI family, the Christian media family uh right now i believe we are the most important voice in this time yeah amen we are the most important voice once upon a time when there was a nation in crisis and a nation under duress a nation that needed direction a nation that needed deliverance from its enemies, God would raise up a prophet from amongst the people to lead them and guide them through such a time. And every prophet, Bishop, correct me if I'm wrong, when it was a matter of restoration and looking to rebuild and looking to prosper, every prophet directed the people to the word of God. That's right. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Come on. And and so it's no different uh, now because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, you yeah, know, it, yeah. it, the way out is Jesus Christ. And sorry, religious people, it is that simple. Sorry, educated people, <laughs> that is the answer. I don't need to mix it uh, with any other information. I don't need to mix it with any other theology, any other theory, any other ideology. I don't need to mix Jesus with anything. All I need to do is look to him and his word. That's it. That's right. So I, I, I don't... Right. You know, because that's how we are. We talked about it before. We're in the information era, you know, where information is readily available to us at our fingertips, at the click of our touch uh, screen phones, right? But no matter what, 
no matter how much information or no matter how progressive our society gets, the answer is still Jesus. Still Jesus. Look, he's the ancient of days, but he ain't old. He's everlasting. There's no age to God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't old. That's the yeah. old way of doing things. Listen, I, I, I get that the, who God has used and the things that he has um, raised people to do in certain fashions. You know, some of those things may not work today, but God's word still works today. Amen. So, so however God is using you to bring that forth, that's what needs to take place. I don't have to copy a person's, you know, blueprint. The only blueprint I need to copy is the word of God's. That's it. You know, right. I can't do it the way TD does it or the way whoever these other people do it or, you know, other people in the faith do it. That's not, I can't, I'm not a copycat. Like I can't, I can't put somebody else's armor on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I can't uh, take the vision God has given to that person and try to make it mine and try to walk in that. That might be a revelation to some vision jackers out there, Bishop. You know, who who's steadily trying to jack a vision from somebody and then start trying to walk in that and then bump their heads down the road and wonder what happened. Well, because you probably stole that from right. somebody else. That's why it's not working for you. You know, That's right. you, you can't right. do that. You got to get the vision God gave to you because that comes directly from God. Yeah, you know, and and that's um that's one thing I'm mindful of, just kind of like what we were talking about, even with this podcast. You know, I believe God's given me a pretty clear vision. Um, God has always reminded me, you know, ever since uh you know I was sitting there at 25 years old, Stafford Creek Correctional Facility, at a Monday morning church service with Pastor Bob. Amen. And, and listening to him preach and having that desire that, man, I would love to preach the word in such fashion. You know, I wasn't saying I, I want to be necessarily like this person, even though that wasn't bad at all. But it was more of a right. desire right. of, man, I want to have the clarity, the power behind it, you know, the 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 understanding in when I speak the word of God, I want to have that, you know, and um, it was a good desire because that's, that's what God desired, you know, right. and, and as I grew up, uh, obviously under your mentorship and discipleship, you know, you emphasize that every day um, in God using you. As much as, as Bishop, as much as God has given to you uh, wisdom and deep revelation and the understanding God has given to you about his kingdom and his word, as much as he's given to you, you've never acted like you're some type of gatekeeper to the kingdom. Like you never <laughs> acted like people got to go through you to get something of God, you know, or, or like sell them something in order to give them these nuggets from the kingdom. Like, no, you always emphasize, man, God within you wants to give you this. This is free to you. God wants to use you. God gave you a gift. God gave you a call and he gave you a vision. He wants to use you, <laughs> you know, and and you've yeah. always and you've always done your best to equip people in order to get them to that place where they begin to walk in the power and the authority and the calling and gifting that God has given to that individual. Never holding nobody back like some of these pastors oh, out hallelujah. here, you know, 
Like some Come of these on. pastors I'm out here. Sit on the bench for five years. Yeah, you got to be under their tutelage for umpteen years until your your back looked like Humpty Dumpty, and you know time has passed you by, and you know now you're thirty years down the line, haven't done nothing because you waiting for the pastor to say, "Yeah, I think you're ready now." Come Man. on. And, and and by the way, I'm not saying that we ain't under authority and that we ain't under leadership. I'm not saying none of that. But every good leader knows that he's only led by the Spirit of God. And when God reveals who somebody is to that person, their responsibility is to assist that person into the things of God. Not hold them back. Not get jealous right, over their right. gift. Not, say, not think to themselves, well, if I let him preach... Uh, the people might start listening to him or her more than me. And the membership might be threatened. And the member, yeah, the membership might be threatened. The people might rise up against me and remove me from my uh, position and want that person in the position. Man, look, that's the devil. <laughs> that's, that is nothing but the devil and that is nothing but your own carnality, your own spiritual insecurity. Your lack of understanding, immaturity. There's a few things mixed into that frame of thinking, and they're out there. You know, sure. there's leaders sure. that are out there. They're leading you to a corner in isolation. <laughs> you know, so that nobody can see the, gu- uh, the gift that God has given to you. Because of that person feeling threatened by it. They're out there. And um, so that's why we always encourage people, man, get into the word. Get into the word for yourself. You know, uh, don't rely on somebody else's commentary. Don't rely on uh, somebody else to give you the green light. Because, again, a calling, a gift, a uh, Knowing that you've been with Jesus, that go that doesn't go unnoticed. That is very noticeable. You know, and so our, our responsibility isn't to say, man, how do we stop this person? No, our responsibility is to say, how can we help this person? How can we get them, how can we get them to go further? You know. Man, um, I wish I wish this message would have been given throughout um throughout my life because you know and you're my witness that's been uh uh the achilles heel for me you know since god's called me you know to the ministry man and it's mm-hmm. always been and we know that there will always be opposition you know because of the accuser of the brother right yeah and you know it's going to always be that fight, you know, mm-hmm. because you have opposers and people who are coming against you and people who are saying and I, now mind you, we're not talking about the world. We're talking about we're talking about saved folk. Yeah. Saved folk who don't, you know, want to encourage you in what God's called you to do. They don't want to uh uh support you know, what you're doing in the Lord, you know, as you're stirring up the gift that God is giving you, they're saying, well, you know, we don't want it to be on our watch. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't fit the people here. Right. You know, and I'm saying, you know, the gospel is the gospel, man. Yeah. The gospel is the gospel. And, 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 And in these, and in these times, and in this day and age, you know, this is, matter of fact, this is an exciting time, you know, because, hey, you know, we're expecting Christ, you know, any day, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we want to continue to do all that we can do while we're here, you know, to add to the kingdom of God. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what our mission is. That's what, that's what we endeavor to do, you know, yeah. is, is to, is to, is to you know, supernaturally convince someone, you know, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, obviously, you know, that Jesus is Lord. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, 
if you believe, you can make him Lord of your life. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, and, and I I love, you know, uh, uh, you know, the other topics that we have, and we're just led of the Holy Spirit to just, you know, free flow into whatever he says to, you know, talk about, you mm-hmm. know, because he knows what's going to touch the heart of the world, you know, and what's going to, you know, causing the people to say, hmm, well, you know, I never heard it like that, but that, I agree with that, right. you know? So, so you know, an answer coming through us, hot off the press, you know, to nobody, by the way, that, that's the thing, mm-hmm. you know, he used the foolish things of the world to confound the why, mm-hmm. you know, the weak things of the world to show how strong he is. I'm so glad that, you know, God, God comes through the lowly, you yeah. know, through through what the world, you know, considers despised. God said, "Oh no, now they qualify." Yeah, absolutely. Those are the ones that I want to speak to, right there. Amen. You know, the 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 the, the mega ecclesiastical, not after new legator uh, of the gospel. <laughs> you know, those, the, you know, I mean, you know, the, those, you know, uh, high clergy, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't basically see that, you know. So, right. But praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, I mean, glad he chose me. Yeah, same here. Um, I I tell people all the time. I don't. I didn't just wake up one day. You know at Monroe Correctional Facility and said, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to start teaching people the word of God. Yeah, I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> you know, I I did, I didn't have no desire of any of that. I didn't even know what none of that was, you know. Um, huh. even, even, when, even when I got saved and when I started getting into the word, I never felt like, okay, let me, let me now choose my profession. You know, like some people, you know, they get saved and you know what? I want to be this and I want to be that, you know, I want to be a, I want to be a pastor and I want to be a, a, an apostle or, Hey, I want to be a prophet. And it's like, yo, nobody chooses what they want to be. Not in the kingdom. <laughs> you, 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 this isn't right, a well, job yeah, application. On. This isn't this isn't a ch- choose your hours and your profession and all that like some people do and it's like then they get and the reason I say a bishop because people are so confused bro like they 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 go about it in that way you know like pastor a popular gifting in the body that is treated like a job profession I'm. Well, I think I'm a pastor. What do you mean? You think in the kingdom? There's no I think. Sorry. You know, it. You know, Paul always emphasized about knowing, and we know. The 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 all of the New Testament is based off you knowing. Why? Because now you have the spirit of God living inside of you. It's no longer yeah. a mystery. All has been revealed in Jesus. Right? So, so, and, and I'm not talking about people who are just coming in and they're trying to figure it out as far as they're new and they don't really know because they haven't been discipled or, or have dug into the word. But I'm saying once you do, these things come to light. You know, the calling, the the gift, the purpose, they come to, it comes to light. You will have a clear understanding, you know, and so many people in the body still don't. They really, really don't. And so we can't treat this as some type of job profession or some type of, I choose to be blase, blase. Paul himself said, I am what I am. By the grace of God. He didn't ask to be who he was. God chose him to be who he was. And when we settle into that, guess what? We'll be more effective because I'll stop trying to be something else that God didn't call me to be. And when I, 
when I relinquish and submit to who he's called me to be, I'll be 100% more effective than when I was confused, right? And so, you know, we're, no, nobody nobody checked the box and said, hey, I'm going to be a pastor today, you know, and then five years down the line, it doesn't work out for me, then I go ahead and reapply for an apostle. Five years down the line, that didn't work for me. Now I'm going to reapply to be a, a prophet. You, no, <laughs> you know, you, you got to know what God has already given to you. You know, you have to understand that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Amen. It comes from God. And so when uh, you get into that, into, into the gifting aspects, and if there's somebody that can help teach you correctly, you know, that it'll make sense. You'll come to realize and say, oh, wait, that's me. I've always done that. That defines what I've always done. You know, like when we've gone through the fivefold ministry giftings, and we got to get back on that too. Uh, but when we've got on this show and talked about the giftings, you know, once you understand the definition and the functions, nine out of 10, you're going to be like, wait a minute. I've already been doing that. That sounds like me. And now you got to, now you got a clear picture and say, oh, I have an evangelistic gift. And guess what? Once that's verified, the Holy Spirit verifies it to you at that very second. Now you have even more confidence into walking the vocation God gave to you. You have a clear understanding of what it is God has called you to do. And guess what? More effectiveness, more fruit. Now you're walking in the in the purpose God gave to you. Now you're now you're sure of your election, of your calling, you know? And you're on your way. Your identity is established. And so, yeah, that's what the devil don't want. That's why he wants to use ignorance. Ignorance is the biggest, one of the biggest weapons against you. <laughs> you know, and uh, that spirit, one of the most dangerous spirits out there, the spirit of religion, wants to keep <laughs> you ignorant to who God's yeah. called you to be. So we got to be careful, man. Uh, yeah, that's what God gave me for our first 20 minutes of intro. <laughs> Amen. Bishop. Amen. Solid. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, we don't have a pre-production. We don't ever have pre-production over here, man. Sorry, guys. I know some of y'all do, you know, but uh, mo mostly it's just kind of like when we get called. Not to say we don't prepare for certain things, but, you know, nine out of ten when we get called up to even, like, let's say the pool pit and somebody just tells us to give 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 a five-minute word of exhortation or something, you know, hey, man, I don't got no notes, but the moment... I get up there, God will come through. I don't have to worry about it, you know, because he he said he'll give me the words that I need to speak at that very hour. So, <laughs> you know. Right, that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And, and referring back to Pastor Bob, like, I never seen him. Every time he preached, this dude's preaching like just, oh, my God, revelation. And but yet I never see him with a notepad, never see him with an iPad, never see him with a, a, a notebook, nothing. He just opens the Bible. So we need some more of that. That's what you call good Bible teaching. When you just open the Bible and let the Holy Spirit teach. Hey, can't get no better than that. When you start handing me 15 pieces of paper and uh Links to blah, blah. Man, look, you kind of lost me, man. I ain't even going to front. I ain't going to lie, Bishop. When you start handing me handouts with like 30 pages or something, I might I might be a little lost, man. I just might. I just might. Man, other than that, man, what's um? Uh, share something that's been on your, on your heart, on your mind. Oh, man, just, you know, just in line, you know, with, what the Holy Spirit's, you know, been doing with you concerning, and that's just, you know, in this day and age, just really, you know, presenting, you know, the church the way that she should look. 
mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, she should look like, you know, uh, somebody that is, you know, a representative, you know, of Christ, you know, because he's our groom and he's coming back for us. And we want to make sure, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. we, we, we're carrying his name correctly. You know, but I mean, but so often, man, we we struggle, you know, with with you know uh, with the strife and 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 the envy, and you know, just as you was talking about, you know, just you know the wrong the wrong concept of what love's supposed to look like, and that's because you know the lack of cooperation with the Holy Ghost, you know. And so, you know, that 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 to me is what the church is is, is really lacking. It's like, mm-hmm. no, we 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 you know, we 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 wanna talk about fivefold ministry, but at the same time, uh or we wanna talk about, you know, uh, you know, early church ministry, but uh we 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 have to, you know, remain, you know, an organization you know, in order in order for this to work. You know, not, you know, we 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 we're gonna trust in God's word and we're gonna go according to what God has said. Those mm-hmm. are our instructions. Mm-hmm. We we you know, it's like no we have to do what the government say do. Yeah. You know? And 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 so, you know, and and one of the things too, man, that makes me laugh sometimes, Miguel is how can the church by now still be so ignorant to their nature? Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. I mean, Christians act like they don't have a carnal nature and that, you know, Christ didn't come and die for you know what the first Adam brought into the world and that's sin mm-hmm. you know it, you know I mean it's like you know I was explaining to somebody you know because you know the world got a problem with Jesus that's just the bottom line so if you yeah. if you if you that's why there are so many other counterfeits you know other religions you know, because the enemy knows that, you know, through Christ there's eternal life and you know you 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 you've uh crossed over from death unto life and and so you 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 you've inherited, you know, a greater a greater gift of God, or should I say the greatest gift of God. Yeah, you know that he's given mankind. It's like he knows that, you know. And so, you know, but the church is like they're they're so stuck on. Should I say we so we're so stuck on, you know, how to follow some format. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And literally, the format is nothing like Christ drew it up. Man, absolutely. The format is almost like the Pharisees drew it up, who he was very opposed to. Mm -hmm. And so I I just sometimes, you know, I'm like, well, no, this is what the church looks like. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, to me, to me, it seems like you know, <clears throat> this is what a business looks like. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> that's that's you know, I mean, that's that's kind of you know, over the years, what I've seen, and it's like, and I, and not just over the years, but I've always, I've always, you know, noticed it, but you know. Before I got saved, I, I didn't understand it. I was just, you know, a pew potato and kind of 
you know, just going off of what, you know, those Christians in those days did. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, you know, that's, that, that was what they did. And that's how they worshiped. And, you know, that to me was the picture of church, you know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But grace, gr- grace has unfolded, obviously, the truth, you know, because that's what Jesus is full of, grace and truth. So, you know, mm-hmm. when you come into the truth, you see his grace, you know, and when you understand his grace, you know, the revelation of the truth is yeah. revealed. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, so, yeah. I feel like they put a lot of, uh, I think what taints it a lot, because you brought up the word business, right? Uh, I think like more in our modern society, they be, everybody's so good with like the vocabulary now, right? <laughs> like you got a lot of people that are really smart, you know, and, and that's fine. Not, the vernacular. Yeah, you know, they, they, there's a lot of categorization, right? We can categorize and put a label on a lot of things that fit a particular definition, right? So just like right. a lot of these Christians, they'll look back maybe at like the book of Acts and they'll begin to see certain things and then they'll say, oh, well, that's a business. And it's like, well, when you when you start throwing that term onto certain things, any term you start putting on something that is spiritual, You've made it carnal in a way because now you're going to subconsciously or consciously, you're going to try to abide by something through that secular terminology, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you're taking the freedom out of it because when I read the distribution of goods to meet the needs of the people, like the book of Acts did when it came to things, right? Uh, Food, supplies, whatever it might be. See, that came from the heart of Christ, though. That came from the heart of giving. That came from the heart of taking care of God's people. That's where that comes from, right? But now when I begin to throw a business term to it, now it becomes more of, okay, how do I profit off of this? Mm-hmm. How can we give to the people and get some get something back in return? That's what that begins to yeah, do. Kind of, <laughs> we're kind of like Simon the Sorcerer. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got I got a power now. I can manipulate mm-hmm. to take from. Mm-hmm. You know, in vulnerability, the devil loves to use vulnerability. You know, right. to right. steal from you because. Listen, like something I posted on my page, you know, the devil, he trans he transforms himself into an angel of light. Don't be surprised. That's what the, that's what Paul was saying. Right. right? Don't be surprised. Right. Right. And so my right. caption, my 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 commentary to that scripture was, you know, the devil, he ain't some uh what they depict in cartoons, red Big, funny, pointy nose with horns and a pitchfork and a red tail and all that type of stuff. You know, he he transforms himself literally into what you like. Right. What your heart desires, but more so what your flesh desires. Right. He'll be the prettiest thing that you've ever seen. Right. But no matter how good or or the shape or form that that, that he trans, transforms himself into, his mission is still and will always be the same. Steal, kill, and destroy. It, it doesn't matter how much pleasure you've gotten from him, how much monetary gain you've benefited from him. He's trying to kill you. It's non-negotiable. You know, and there's more ways to kill you than just completely taking your life. He'll cause you to make decisions right. that'll be detrimental to you and detrimental to generations that come from you. That's right. You know, and so 
That is the danger. It ain't just a quick shot. It's like it's like cancer. Cancer just isn't meant to stay in one spot of your body. It's meant to take over your entire body until you die. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's meant to affect right. every limb, every organ, every blood cell. It That is what it's going to do. So you can't isolate it and just be like, oh, well, my bad decision just hurt me. Oh, just right. me. No, guess what? It'll hurt your children. It'll hurt your business. Oh, yeah. It'll hurt your private life. It'll hurt your public life. It'll hurt everything. Because that is the consequence of that, right? Just like when I went to prison, Bishop, I thought it was just woe is me. But didn't know the toll it took on my mother. Right. Didn't right. know the effect right. it would take on my little brothers and my little sister. You know, right. didn't know... Uh, the effect that it would take not just me being in a cell, but what it would do to me mentally and emotionally and all that other stuff. Because contrary to popular belief, the dangers of prison isn't just fighting somebody. Fights happen all the time and people are fine. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, but nobody speaks on that emotional trauma. Nobody speaks on what it does to your soul. Nobody speaks on the spiritual implication it does to your, you know, to your heart and that inward thing. Nobody speaks to that because society is just, you know, they always paint whatever being locked up as something that has to do with some physical violence. That's all they paint it to be, you know, not the mental health aspect of it. Because ain't nobody checked up on me when I got out. You know, as far as, hey, man, how did you deal with that in your mind? Like, what what is some therapeutic needs that we can meet for you? Nobody talks about that part, Bishop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Nobody cares right. for that. But thank God for Jesus, for my life, that he is, he is uh, my healer, my therapy, my, the, you know, the Holy Spirit is what keeps me from not looking like what I've been through, like Brother Patrick loves to say. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know. The word of God. <laughs> yeah, it's the word Amen. of God. Yeah. So anyways, but yeah, that's in what you're saying as far as the church not understanding their own nature. You know, if 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 we understood what our our, our uh the difference between the natural and the spiritual like Romans 8 so eloquently breaks down to us, very simply breaks down to us, if we understood that, we would stop trying to change our flesh every day. (laughs) And feeling like we're so far removed from God because our flesh thought something, felt something, reacted somehow, some weird way. You know, because that's all, I'm sure you hear, you know, Bishop, you've heard it plenty longer than me. How so many people have most likely approached you and felt like they're not worthy because they thought wrong that day. Sure, sure. It always has to do with something inside of them, in their mind, right? Or or, or maybe they slipped up in a particular action. And they always use that as, oh, no, nah, God, God don't, you know. He don't love me today. Uh, you mm. know, I, I'm not qualified to do all that. I'm I'm this, I'm that. I thought this, I said that. And it's like, yo, that has nothing to do. That has no bearing on salvation. And, and media, <laughs> Go that's ahead. When, that's when a person has, or you, you, you would have to question or bring a person into the knowledge of you know, their salvation. Because we know that a dead man don't understand or respond. Correct. So if your spirit man is not alive, you know, there's no response, you know, to what God's word is saying, feeding, piercing, you know, uh, uh, injecting into your spirit, man. That is the life that God 
is breathing into your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so it's like, you know, when a person struggles with that, because we know why the world don't, you know, what separates the unsaved from God, and mm -hmm. that's sin. Yeah. But once they repent and accept Jesus as Lord, you know, he is the covering. He's the one that advocates on our behalf, and he's the one who gives us access. He's the one who, you know, makes sure that the adoption takes place. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, but they, they and, and an unsaved person, you know, always stand in the posture of, you know, I'm condemned, rather than saying, be, and the reason why is because Christ is missing. Mm. Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that, you know, through me, the world might be saved, but if they don't believe in me, that they're condemned already. And we know most, I'm going to say adults, uh -huh. that have heard of the gospel. There's no adult that's walking around, contrary to popular belief, that haven't heard, you know, the story of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And I had one brother that to, 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 to pose the question, you know, about the virgin birth, you know, and, the, you know, the immaculate conception and, 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 you know, that, you know, if Jesus, if Jesus was born, you know, of a woman, you know, well, he inherited a sin nature, you know, and that, you know, he had, an, and, I, and I had to explain to him, no, he didn't inherit a sin nature. That was the reason. Mm -hmm. That was the reason that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. When yes. the Holy Ghost conceives something, the Holy Ghost conceives God's word. That's what the Holy Spirit produces. Yes, is sir. God's word. That's what. That's the conception that takes place in every Christian, in every believer. The same conception that took place with Mary is what takes place with every human being that experiences salvation. Amen. And Jesus, Jesus, and so therefore he could not have inherited sin nature, mm -hmm. you know, because he wasn't born of the will of man. Mm -hmm. That's right. He was born of the will of God. That's why, that's why, that's why God, so how you use it brilliantly, skip that phase. <laughs> say no. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. You know, he has to be, he has to be the savior. Mm -hmm. And the only way that this can be accepted, you know, the sacrifice that he'll be, you know, to me, you know, will be sinless. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so I, I, I thank God, man, just for understanding, you know, because you have people, man, that go to seminaries and spend years you know, studying theology, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying theology is not, I'm not saying that theology is bad, but you have, you know, many people studying, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and learning about God, you know, and, and, and never really coming into, you know, a right understanding, you know, of him. Yes. And That's like right. you said at the beginning of the show, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Jesus has simplified it. Mm -hmm. He's made it simple. I don't care how you articulate it. I don't care how wide your vernacular is. Mm -hmm. You know, the gospel is the gospel. Yes, sir. And that's what saves. You know, it, it, it's the cross, you know, that is the power that God is using, mm -hmm. you know, to draw those who don't know him to him. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, you know, you, 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 you know, 
the enemy has birthed racism and contention between races, right? Mm -hmm. And now what happens is, is the enemy says things like, well, you know, uh, Islam was the first religion mm -hmm. because Ishmael was born first. And Christ is not mentioned even in the Bible that, you know, uh, not, they won't tell you that it, that that the word of God was inspired. You know that 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 he inspired men to speak these words that he gave them. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They'll 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 just put it. Oh well. You know the transcripts that were written written. You know they were written by you know white people. They'll <laughs> just. They just stick with that and say, "Oh, well, that that's a lie. That's not true." Yeah, <laughs> and I and and they and they hang their hat on 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 that basis. And I'm saying to myself, you know, what you don't understand is faith is what causes the supernatural. It has nothing to do with 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 who was scribes and who copied what. Once. You accept Jesus as Lord. The, 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 the spirit is who give it life. It's not the letter. Yes, sir. It, even if I didn't sit down and read, the Holy Spirit will make sure that I get a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because God is going to make sure that you eat. He's responsible for your spirit eating, your spirit man being fed. Yeah, that's why Christ he he, he gave he gave a, a beautiful example of how he was able to sustain forty days and forty nights. <laughs> he said, "Look, man, should not live by bread alone. Like, look, I'm 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 hungry because the Word of God says that he was hungry. That that's when the enemy came." Is when he knew he was hungry. Yes, sir. In his flesh. You know, just his humanity, man, was starving. Hey, look, I, I need something to eat. But there's a reason why I'm doing this. Right. There's a reason why I'm led to do this. You know, that's why when the Holy Spirit leads you to do something, Know that the Holy Spirit is going to finish what He led you to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because ultimately He's leading you to the rock that's higher than you. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just grateful, bro. That just out of all of the years that you have been in my life and I've been in your life, that. You know, Jesus has always been the the sinner. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We we and I believe that that's why God has brought us as far as He has, and has demonstrated and kind of and 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 has featured His favor. Yeah, in us, just as the lady out of New York said, "Come on, Larry, get with us." Yeah, uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of like, you know, this man, and, and, you know, just like this lady said, man, you know, that we would, that we are, we are jury, locked in a jury box under God. Mm -hmm. And that one day God is going to display us. Yes, sir. And wear us. And show us to the world. Oh, yeah. And I, I just, I, I, I know, you know, my purpose, you know. In this life, you know, and that my steps are not ordered by anybody but the Lord. Yeah. I can't, I can't sit back and not know why, what my vocation is when I'm led to a situation. Yeah, it absolutely. don't matter what the situation is. It could be me in a situation that some woman is trying to be seductive and seduce me. Mm -hmm. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is saying, nope, mm -hmm. Jesus is supposed to be a part of this. 
Yeah. So she'll make the choice. Yeah. Whether to get gone or to surrender her life at this very moment. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. That, and I've always used that. That's part of the way that I have made, remained faithful. Praise the Lord. I can tell men in the world, Christian men, we can, Miguel. Yeah. That it is possible. Very that possible. That a man can remain faithful and not commit adultery on his wife. Very possible. Sure. Not because of the law, but because of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, if you was under the law, you know? hey, man. <laughs> hey, look. You know. We'd all, look. I'd already look. I'd already been. Uh, I'd have had knots on my head as y'all burying me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. because I would have been stoned to death. Right. You know? And yeah. you know, but praise the Lord. You know, I. You know what, Don Miguel? People got to realize God chooses the icky, the nasty, mm -hmm. the 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 the. the 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 lowest, you know, yeah, sin that mankind could ever practice, unless you know, I Jesus to come through this line. Yeah, absolutely. It's the reason why Jesus came through the line of Rahab. Mm -hmm. Think about who Rahab was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? And and it's like. You know, David, some would uh, blasphemy, mm. you know. We ain't going to go into it yet. You know, uh, I'm not blasphemy, but you know, what else, else say it is, uh, or even heresy, yeah. you know. And, 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 but, you know, David, David today would have had several labels, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or David. David would have had several charges. Mm -hmm. If he had to, if 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 it had not been for Christ, and 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 David would have, uh, uh, which he he did undergo, you know, a judgment, you know, that God told Nathan to give him, mm -hmm. you know, that there, you know, hey, look, the iniquity was passed down, you know, it's 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 his, his children were bent and crooked to the very thing. That the you know that his flesh causing him to fall into. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it was his flesh, just like if if, if whatever if a man is hooked on pornography or a woman is hooked on pornography, it's because their flesh is drawing them to entertain that for some yeah. kind of gratification. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Mm hmm. He was watching pornography, wasn't he? Live and direct. No but camera. You know, high def, huh? High definition. Matter of fact, it, it was, huh? No camera, no so no link, huh? No link, no camera, just right there, live and direct, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, look, and he, he 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 was able to do something about it. Yeah, you know, hey, look. In his mind, in his mind, he had a pop up. Yeah, yeah, that was a pop up. <laughs> yeah, he had an invite. Yeah, that was a he pop up, had an invite, man. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had an invite. He yeah. says, "Look, I, I, hey, look, I gotta have that." Mm -hmm. But I thank God that you know that the revelation is. I know the revelation that God gave to me is like, "Look, man, remember, David was under the law. Mm -hmm. He knew, and 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 and, and, and Bathsheba knew." For sure. I mean, you know, in David's position, in a position of trust, he could kind of like, ah, well, you know, his disobedience, you know, his conscience, you know, kind of made him, or, 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 or he was overtaken to believe that his consequences wouldn't be because of his status. Right. I can get away with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a I'm a repentant man. I'm I'm a man after God's own heart. You know, I mean, I, you know, God yeah. know me. You know, I I I I I'll say I'm sorry. You know, down the road. You know, after after uh after the pledges fulfilled. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. you know. And, and so, you know, I mean, and him being in a position of trust was able to do what he did. But to my point, you know, Bathsheba is the one that when you really look at it and you really know that, you know, she it was against her will because the law was very clear. The mm-hmm. penalty for adultery was yeah, it was death. Death. I don't, you know, and I, I mean personally, bro. I mean, you know, this is me. As many people is panicking about the pandemic right now, reason why they panicking is because of what the virus killed. Mm-hmm. So nobody's sitting back, you know, uh, with a you know, standing in line to get a ticket to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and so I, I I know she wouldn't have, you know, been, you know, anxious to say, oh, well, yeah, even though, you know, this is, you know, the king, I think it's okay. Uh, no. So whatever picture, you know, you know, you want to paint out there, you know, Ask the Holy Spirit to give you, man, David, you and a revelation in it. Hey, know? man, but look, da- just, David took that. Yeah, man. David took it. He did. David took it, man. He took advantage of it. You he know, did. he 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 knew. Yeah. He, he like you said, his status. And you know, <laughs> you know, he's king. You yeah. do whatever he wants. She was succumb to that. She yeah. had to, you know, against her own will. She's like, man, absolutely. I'm not trying to do this. But doggone, this is the king and all that. I'm like. I got you know, uh, absolutely. Because her husband loved her. They they did nothing indicated that they didn't love each other. Um, that's right. <laughs> you know, Uriah. What I'm saying? Hey, look, look. Uriah was like, Uriah, look, I'm not even going that- into my wife, man. I'm at, I'm at war. I love God. You know, I'm what saying? patriotic, man. Yeah, I'm patriotic. Yeah, I love the Lord. Yeah. David was like, uh, yeah. so I ain't gonna be able to move him that way. Uh, let's put him on the front line. Where they getting killed, we'll get rid of him that way. Because yeah. he loved God too much to move from his post so I can go do what I do. But Just see, gotta remove that, him. That's what see, that's what he's saying when each man is drawn of his own lust and his own entice. Mm-hmm. Lust conceives sin and sin conceives death. It's like, you know, once a person you know, go that far into sin, you know, their conscience began to get seared. You, yeah. you, you can't get nothing in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so now a man's way seemed right to him. You know? Yeah. I mean, and we, we, we're dealing with some, man, well, I'm dealing with something, you know, even right now as we, as, as we speak, that's just so, to me, disappointing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but all you have, you know, all we can do is, is stand and pray. And, you know, but I can hear Larry Davis say, no, you can confront that. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you yeah. can confront that, you know. Uh, but in the joint, look, look, in the joint, you can kind of corner people a little bit, a little bit easier. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they run you, for miles out here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, they could blink off the face of the earth. Yeah, look, they could block your call, <laughs> block, d- delete you from their social media page, uh, yeah. not pick up, you know. Yeah. You know, easier yeah. to run out here. Easier to run, you know. Come on, bro. That's why we're conditioned. People don't understand us. You know, they, they, they don't, they're marveled by you know, us being able to be so straightforward and, and look people in the eye about certain things. It's because we've been conditioned that way. I mean, it's not bad. You know, we've been conditioned that way. That word encourages us to confront. Yeah. And, and, and that's what the Holy Spirit used to develop the boldness. Yes, sir. That God has produced in us. See, it doesn't matter. See, that's, I'm so grateful, bro, that it doesn't matter where a person has been in life when it comes to 
I know how God has like dealt with you and I. Mm-hmm. That we can, we can, we can, we can, we can speak to anybody. You know, we can, we can, we can have, we can have a dialogue with anybody, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about yeah. anything. Absolutely. You know, uh, 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 and there's no, there's no fear in it. You know, I, we, we can, we can, uh, we can sit down and we can have a conversation with the police. Sure. As to why, and you know, why, why the stereotype, why, you know, the harassment, the profiling, you know, we, we, we can sit down and have a conversation because who better went through it, you know, in this day and age than us. I think anybody and everybody that has been incarcerated, they went through some form of profiling, some form of brutality. Yes, sir. You know, when it comes to the popo, still brutality in prison. <laughs> to, you you and know what the prison, police? Say. <laughs> there's no protest. No, not in that nature, anyways. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was talking to uh, I was talking to to my nephew this morning, and he and I was praying with him, and he's like, "Aunt," he said. You know, they're really big on wearing the mask up in here. And he said, I had my mask on, but it, it wasn't covering my nose. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this person wasn't even, you know, the police up in there. She was medical staff. And she walked by and said, pull your mask up, up on your face. And really, you know how they get really authoritative and start really, you know, getting out of pocket mm-hmm. you know he was like you know he, he was like you know all right well you know i mean i got my mask on but she, I, you know i don't want it over your nose and he was saying you know he was just praying he was like lord i guess this is your shape in me and just really you know allowing your fruit to mature in me because once upon a time i'd have snapped out been in the hole you know went 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 left you know how it goes no you, man you know, go off Oh yeah, the goon squad coming in and everything else, you know. But he said, you know, I was just able to, you know, I was able because he says I had a problem with authority. But he says, you know, I was able to, I was able to submit, you know, and, yeah. and to do, you know, what she was asking me to do, knowing that it was right and you know, and it was it was it was in my best interest that I did do it. But guess what? She came up to him and said, "Hmm, are you offended by me this morning?" Mm, testing. He said that that's what got him. Like, and she was she was a Caucasian female, and he's like, you know, he said what got him is like, why would you say that? Testing, testing. Is it, is it in lieu of what's going on in the world? Mm-hmm. Why would you? Why would you? Is it because you can say that to us that are incarcerated and there's no consequences mm-hmm. of harassment or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. You know, and he was like, man, he was just like, man, now that's, he was like, okay, Lord, now I passed the first two checks. <laughs> this one right here. So you pushing, <laughs> pushing me on this one. Right, she really pushed the envelope <laughs> on this with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, I mean, I just prayed with him, but I understood exactly, you know, where he was coming from, you know, when it, you know, when it, when it, when, you know, when it relates to that, bro. Yeah. No, no. doubt about it. Just you, mm-hmm. just you sharing that. God on my look, my flesh got tickled. <laughs> hey, look, I have, I'll be having flashbacks, man. I used to be a young, really dumb, stupid kid in prison, man. Talking to the, especially with the police, I talked to them bad. I'll talk to them bad. I don't care. Bravo, look, Bravo was one of them when I first touched H four. Man, I, I, man, I clowned on Bravo so bad. Oh, I got him so mad too. Yeah, but praise the Lord, you know, years later, you heard it, Bishop. You you heard out of he his own mouth. Product. Yeah, he said, yeah. man, I did. He said, I didn't even like this dude. I couldn't stand oh, yeah. this guy. Yeah. Flat out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. when I went to my hearing before I went to uh, camp, I don't know if you were still there or if you left, but I, I remember. No, I, I was gone. Yeah, I remember I was having my hearing with the CUS, and he came in there. I don't know if it was a hearing for Ken. Anyway, it was some kind of hearing. Um, not that I got in trouble, but he literally interrupted. It was like, hey, 
Don't mean to interrupt, but I just want to say, man, that this guy right here, he said, hey, I, he said, I won't lie. I didn't like him at first. He said, but this young man, his whole life has changed. This is a whole different guy right here. And he said, I, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, this dude, he's a good, he's a good inmate. Uh, he's a good example out here. And so uh, I just threw in my two cents and he just left. After that, he just left. And, uh, and, the, and the CUS was looking like, huh? Like, hey, that's a first. <laughs> you know, that uh, that right. a, that an officer would just interrupt in the middle of his, this meeting and say that. And, um, right. you know, and, and I know you've, you've had uh, such an impact, too, on people, too, man. And that's why we always emphasize, you know, people be thinking like we lying over here or something. We emphasize... <laughs> God's power and what he does. Cause look what he did where we were at, bro. Like you don't hear this type of stuff in the media, you know, uh, of what, you know, Jesus is doing and has done with people who was locked up like us, the, uh, right. the, ch- oh, no. you know, the change that, you know, guards undertook the change, uh, the environment in inmates attitudes, how they've changed. Like granted it's still prison, but doggone the power of God seemed to tame the environment. I think that's a safe word, <laughs> right? Tame yeah. the environment. Yeah. I think that was a good word, you know, yeah. as to where yeah. other units, you know, you had dudes getting their heads cracked left and right, all kinds of problems and issues and heck, you had other inmates wanting to kite out of there and come to where we were at. No doubt of say it, bro. They were, the CUS and these guys, they was flabbergasted. Like, I keep getting these kites. That's our form of text messaging, by the way, uh, world. Um, it, you know, these kites, getting these kites, requesting that these people come over here because of what's going on here. That's right. Who are these God people? They're coming over here over some Christian stuff. What the heck is going on here? Look, they telling them we want to come to H4 because we got good Christian brothers there and this is going to help me become a better person and a better inmate. That's what they were saying. You had them dudes confused. The the, the police and them guys just confused. Like, why everybody want to come here? (laughs) <laughs> what was the female's name, bro? What was the female's name that everybody was afraid of? Oh man, me and Joe was just talking about her. I forget her name though. Oh man, it'll, man, it'll come uh, to me afterwards. But she was feared. Yeah, she she <laughs> was. She, they, see, people don't understand if they had been there. You know, if they haven't been there, but all they have to do is just condense the world, condense society into maybe a couple of thousand people yeah. that 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 is in one country. Yeah. But the country has been downsized like, to maybe twenty four hundred people. Yeah, a compressed society. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, compressed society. Yeah. Crabbed and, in a bucket, like, sardines. Look. Oh, <laughs> man. All smashed but, in together. <laughs> But you know what, though? That's, I really, you know, what I, I I noticed is, you know, people, when they are in a place that their mind mm-hmm. is sober. Mm-hmm. And I ain't saying that everybody's sober in prison, because we got some people high. Mm-hmm. They, they get it. I ain't, I ain't throwing them under the bus. But right, right, right. <laughs> hey, hey, whatever you can get in the world, you can get in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's like, <laughs> you know, but it's like, you know, the 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 choice of, you know, uh, taking it is 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 not as uh, great as it, as it is out here. Mm-hmm. And right. and there. And therefore, a person, a person is who they really are, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, I always tell people you know, who, who get high when I'm ministering to them, I'm like, that's a lie, because mm-hmm. that's who the enemy is. So he, he always wants, he's never going to be truthful. 
Yeah. So when you're looking at your kid high, you're never who you are. Mm-hmm. You're always lying to your child. Ooh, it's a whole other topic. And you're playing with your child, thinking that, oh, I'm being a good dad. We at the park, you know. I'm done, you know. I'm a little high, I've been smoking a little chronic, you know. But you're lying to your kid because the real you is not with him or Man. with her. Man, that's a whole other topic. That's it a, sure is. That's a whole uh, other topic. <laughs> But you know, in there is like you know, they they the minds are clear, and you know, they can they can some of them could be reached, or some of us could be reached in there. Mm-hmm. That would be yeah. I'm always gonna say, uh, you know, uh, look, look, and the Lord He reminded me, yeah, that, that was you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? And so <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, some of us, man, you know that that was. You know, we was able to be reached because of our mind. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 being sober, we was able to look at it and say, "Okay, hmm. yes, I get that. That's right. I got that. That's right." Yes, sir. Amen. Well, shoot, Bishop, we're out of time. Um, but good, good topics you know we were i don't say i don't like to say we're all over the place but you know we we touch on a lot of different things you know because a lot of what we say man it's it's really just down to earth what a lot of people deal with and think about it's revelant you know it's, yeah, it's very revelant we don't gotta uh sit here and tell you uh prevalent uh society issues all the time because you know Mm-hmm. Even with everything going off and the TV goes off and we log out of Facebook or Twitter and all, look, we dealing with real life still. You know, personally, we still, a lot of us are still dealing with ourselves. That's the truth, right? A lot of us still deal with ourselves. And so a lot yeah. of the things we say is, is, it comes from a place of, man, we're dealing through, we're working through our own issues, you know, and these are the things that pop up in almost every man. And women, you know, uh, because there's no temptation except that which is common to man. You right, know, right. so so the things we talk about, I know there's a lot of people that think the same way or have thought certain things. And uh, we're here to help provide, uh, uh, you know, keeping a, a particular stabilization through the Holy Spirit. And so um, that's what I... Uh, that's what I would say, you know, we're doing Bishop is reminding people, keeping, keeping the arrow pointed towards Jesus, you know, through it all, Yes. you know, through, yes. through the thoughts, through the, uh, struggling through the front, you know, because of the flesh or, or being challenged spiritually in our walk, you know, uh, uh, every aspect, you know, our, our aim is still, like you said earlier, Christ centered, keeping him at, uh, at the forefront of everything. So, um, yes. yeah, man, with that said, uh, again, thanks to everybody for tuning in and we will be back next week, every Thursday, catch us on Spotify, Jerry, uh, Jerry Royce live speaker.com. Oh, one last question, Bishop quick. Yes or no. Should the NFL apologize to Kaepernick specifically? Kaepernick should be the right hand man of Roger Cadell. <laughs> so that's a yes. <laughs> that's a yes. Because LeBron said it earlier, just a minute ago. He said, "Hey, the NFL, Roger Cadell, you you need to apologize to Kaepernick himself publicly." Hey, but let me throw this in there. I'm gonna go deeper than that. The owners. Yeah, all of the NFL. All, every last one of them. Right, 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 right. I'm just not talking about the shield itself, but behind the shield, the owners. Man. Those are the ones. I, I, Roger Goodell has already showed some contrition, some remorse. I want to hear the owners, like Jerry Jones. Man, he ain't going to say a doggone thing. You know he a racist. Plantation in Dallas. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> You know you're racist. I'm I'm a I'm a keep it. Uh, no doubt about I'm it. I'm gonna keep it one. <laughs> uh, all right, Bishop. Kaepernick owed yeah. is owed an apology. Get it done. Period. Immediately. <laughs>
Immediately. LeBron James says so. And he a Laker, so we got to support that. <laughs> come on, Avery Bradley, man. I love you, bro. <laughs> hey, LeBron, come on the show, dog. <laughs> All right. All right, man. This is a no judgment zone. We love y'all. God bless. And uh, catch us next time, man. Peace.